So uh, a restraining order, I have a restraining order on this person, and they place my children with his family. So that right there, I kind of thought that was... Um, CPSUN. I'm joined today by a very special guest and expert in CPS law and practice, Jennifer Ani. Jennifer, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, Jennifer, let's take a call from California from someone named Jennifer. Jennifer, are you there? Do you have a story to tell or a question to ask? A uh, story to uh, question to ask, sorry. Go for it. So I, um, my kids, uh, were, I have two children. Um, uh, ages 10 and 5 when this happened, 4, um, but this happened back in August, and um, I basically have been working with um, one social worker. Um, I have two social workers that actually, um, they, I guess I'm, I'm supposed to work with two of them, but I'm only working with one, um, and she has made it very hard for me to, um, to, even just get visits with the children. They, my children were um, born and raised in Orange County, but they were they um, they transferred them to San Bernardino County, um, and and um, they were transferred to San Bernardino County um, with a family member of my daughter's. But my daughter's the the person that she was placed with was my ex boyfriend's family which I have a restraining order with. So uh, a restraining order, I have a restraining order on this person and they place my children with his family. So that right there, I kind of thought that was, um, uh, how would I tell you? Like, um, Unfair. I didn't like it. Yeah, and, and, and due, due to the fact that um, my son isn't his, his, his son, it's just my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, so that, um, with that, and then they also claimed that um, I had eight eight uh, calls before this call, and um, they were all. I guess it was seven calls, and this was going to be the eighth. So they removed my. They got a warrant for them to remove the children, um, but the the seven calls that um, that they were calling that they're calling that were made were from my ex. But he, all of them were unfounded. Like I had the social workers come out to the house, and they didn't. There was nothing that I was doing uh, wrong. If anything, my daughter did let them know that um, her dad had been telling her to to tell to say say lies about what was going on, or say lies to the social worker. So I just think, like, was it is it true that um, they have to? W wouldn't they investigate first before removing the children? Because right now they're saying that it's that my children were removed because of, um, uh, ne I think, ne Welfare 300 or something, like ne neglect. Mm -hmm. Well, Masani, what do you think about that? That question she had. Well, um, I was hoping to know um, a little more about the reason stated for the removal because mm -hmm. well, they obtained a warrant, which tells me that they didn't find there was any emergency to remove the child. Um, and yes, they, they do have to do an investigation um, however, it is not, it doesn't have to be as thorough as one might think it would have to be until later on in the proceeding at jurisdiction. For detention, it's a probable cause basis pretty much, um, and that is probably the lowest level of proof that is required in our legal system. Um, but what, what, so general neglect because of what? Because of a dirty house, because of... Uh, because um I so I was in a um I think it all started when I I submitted um I requested a restraining order and then I took the restraining order off like I re I requested a restraining so order violence, and then when I went to court yeah when I went to court the day of the hearing um my mom I had basically um I 
I had a we had a we had came to an agreement that I was gonna keep um, my son that he was gonna give me full custody of my son. It was just gonna leave me alone. Like he he said, if you remove if you take it off, um, like I'll just you know I'll give you full custody of of my son Gordo. So I'm like okay. So when I went to see the judge, that's what I told him. I'm like oh I just want to remove that. I'm just here to take to to. I think just I, mean, I don't need the restraining order anymore, but I do want to see if you can give me if I can now apply for full custody for my son. And that's when he's like, "Well, I don't do that, but um, you have to come back and file your paperwork again. Um, file paperwork with the downstairs, like first floor. But um, I can remove the like not remove it, but he was just gonna uh, not kind of like let it go." Not let it, I know that they don't let it go, but they, I basically just told my wife, I just didn't, didn't need any more, but I didn't get, I didn't get full custody of my son. But I think that's what started everything. Um, because I was still letting him see my son and I was still talking to him. So, um, after that, I had been, um, talking to, um, another person and then that person, um, we were already, I stopped talking to, to him and uh, we were already like not even dating or anything. And um, he found out that I was talking to my son's dad also. So he basically, um, he drugged me um, and the night before the social worker was coming out. So the social worker went to the, to the hospital and sh he saw me at the hospital. And then in his report, he said that I was, like spinning out that I was um, withdrawing and it wasn't that it was that I, um, I was taking some, they had given me medication where that was, it kept me like very dizzy and um, I couldn't keep my food in because of, because of the whole medication that they were giving me at the hospital. But it was because I had, um, I had uh, an infection in my lung. So on my paperwork, it said, it, t it told me what to do, like who to contact, uh, in regards to like what had happened, but then they used that against me as like, I got drugged and I was doing drugs in front of my kids. I had my kids with me. My kids were not even there. My kids were here. At my, my apartment with my mom. And I told the, I told the, uh, the, um, the social worker, well, if, if that was the case, why don't you guys, um, check out because this is I live in a private community so I'm like why don't you guys pull a footage from uh, my neighbors right here because all of them have, have all of us have the cameras so why don't if, if you think that I had my kids with me that I came over here and then I got high with my children then why what and, and to show proof why don't you pull footage to show the court that I had that I came over here to get high or you know like I wanted I um the social worker got upset because I didn't want to give them a copy of my my um my hospital paperwork i said no and he's like well I, you know uh, it would benefit you if i um if i that if i gave it to him i'm like i'm not going to give you something that i don't have to give you because that those are my records so um that afternoon on my son's birthday they came to my door with the warrant and they took my children and they told me that the next day they were going to give me the kids because my mom was here and my mom was going to apply to get the kids and the next day came and we went we had this meeting in the morning and then in the afternoon they placed them. They didn't even tell me that they placed them. I thought they were still at Orangewood, um, and they weren't there. They had already placed them with my son, my daughter's, my daughter's, uh, my daughter's brothers, his his younger brothers, um, him and his girlfriend. They placed my children with them. So all weekend, I'm over here calling like um, um, Orangewood, and they're not even there. They didn't even tell me that they had placed them in, Orange, in San Bernardino County. Same thing this year for Christmas. I was like, um, I, w I got sick in the first, the first, the uh, second week of, of, of December. And, um, they placed my, he, the social worker, same social worker switched my son from, um, from San Bernardino County. She, he changed them over here to Orange County to my, with my son's dad's family. And she didn't let me know either. She just placed them and didn't say anything. And then that's when I contacted her and I contacted her supervisor and I went and I told him, I'm like, you know, I don't feel like it's right that she, that, that you do this kind of stuff. Like you, 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 you move my kids around. Two minutes. I didn't even agree for two ways. 
Hold we on. used to transfer Jennifer, them from Jennifer, San Bernardino County. Jennifer, let me interrupt you because um, we're moving towards our next part. Did you have a question for me or Miss Ani today? Yeah, like if um, my my public defender, she is going based off paperwork. She doesn't really know much about my me she doesn't know me as a person which i understand jennifer, she has a lot of more um jennifer, jennifer just ask me the question if i if i um fire my public defender mm -hmm. and i just represent myself mm -hmm. um am i able to ask the judge if what, what is is i feel like um how to say how can I prove that they took my children um, the wrong way? Like, um, how, do, how do I say this? Jennifer, it may be too late, and you may have not structured this question, you know, clearly. So I want you to do something. I want you to call me at my office on Monday, and I'll speak to more. I do. I call you all the time. Right? But that, this is like, the, I've called you like six times, and they, and they already quoted me that the problem is it's the money. Okay, well, it's the money that that's I'm, the reason why I can't hire you. I would have hired you already. Okay, well, I'm telling you to call me on Monday and I'll personally talk to you and try to help you on your case. Triple eight, triple eight, six, five, eight, two. And what we'll do is we'll, you know, if you call today and make an appointment, I'll keep the appointment on Monday and we can talk. Okay? Because we got to move on to our next uh, commercial break. Um, this is the secret how to fight child protective services and when. We'll be right back after these messages. Mm -hmm. 